sure to watch until the end of the video to find out how I got kicked out of the Alchemist Guild. Thank you so much for letting me share this experience with you. I fell in love with Moonstone Island because it takes inspiration from some of my favorite places, like The Legend of Zelda and Pokemon and Studio Ghibli movies. You can just tell that there's been so much love put into this game, just like there's been so much love put into this video, and wait until the end to find out how we're finishing off the 100 days in an interactive way. I began my journey with my dad showing me how to farm. Love this, because when I receive letters from my parents, it feels a lot more endearing than other games. I don't even bother opening up letters from her, unless there's a present attached. Where you never lay eyes on your parents. He showed me how to water the crops and warned that crops will wilt if you don't water them a single day. Then he gave me mom's medallion, which doubles as a pocket dimension. Very bougie. Inside, I got to pick out my starter spirit. I chose capacity because that's clearly the most cottagecore choice. Dad seems pretty excited with my choice too. He assures me that the other two spirits will be well taken care of and I'm thrown into my first battle. Battles use a card-based combat system. Spirits have a shield number. You don't have to break the shield down to zero to damage the enemy. Any damage that is less than the shield number will be fully blocked though. And any damage you apply that's higher than the shield number will subtract the shield number from the damage. Even though you can still do damage without breaking the enemy's shield, it's still a good idea to break it if you can, because the enemy will pass out and that causes them to lose their turn and they take more damage. After a very sweet victory, he tells me how to tame a wild spirit. This takes a little flax flower. Mom calls me in and oh my gosh, she is the cutest. Our house is so precious, but tell me why these plants are barricading me upstairs. She makes me a cup of tea, how thoughtful, and shows me how stone fruit can restore stamina, which is very important because stamina is also my HP. I fed Capacity a Nimbus plant and leveled him up. Then I was given three cards to choose from to add to his deck. I chose Fancy Spin because it was the prettiest and I don't really know what I'm doing yet. Mom started to tear up over my departure and you know what, I was starting to get emotional too. My dad gave me some tools he made, I have the sweetest parents, and I was off to start my year of alchemist training. This is so Kiki's delivery service coded. I love how a unique world is generated because it adds so much replayability to the game. I crashed? How embarrassing. I scrambled around in the dark looking for my tools and found my very first moonstone. Okay. I pass out before I can find my tools though. I woke up in what I'm assuming to be Asuna's house. She saw me drop out of the sky last night and Quill carried me here. She thankfully found the rest of my tools and returned them to me. Downstairs, she told me about her home improvement struggles. She needs some stones for her basement and gave me a recipe for the sail crate. Once outside, a letter from my mom dropped from the sky. Apparently, my mom had a very relevant dream that I broke my broom and wanted to make sure I wasn't stranded without transportation. So she attached a balloon recipe. Thanks, cutie. I headed north of town to start clearing out a spot for my home. I decided to take a short break though to look for my first mine. And it didn't take too long. I'm so happy that there's a counter for how many chests you have left because these places are huge. I received the crafting recipe for the decoration station and had my first spirit encounter. I got Fluffox. If you are mainly focusing on leveling up your relationships, you should definitely have Fluffox in your party. Her passive helps you have positive social interactions. And Capacity leveled up. I chose to level up Capacity's armor. He was looking a little weak and chose a bash card so he could reduce enemy armors. Now that my break is over, I'm back to clearing out a spot for my home. I was able to gather all of Asuna's stones in the mine, but I still need to craft the cell crate. I was short on wood though, so I had to chop some trees. I felt like I should place the cell crate near the stairs so I can stop and sell things on my way to bed without passing out. 
Stones for Asano is completed. Yay, progress! It was starting to get late, but I wasn't quite ready for bed, so I went to see if Asano needed anything else. She told me about a dungeon near the hot spring. I also got a letter from the Alchemist Guild welcoming me. The following misdeeds will lead to disciplinary action or expulsion, giving flying equipment to untrained citizens. Throwing spirits off islands. Eating spirits, you can do that? And forming an army of evil spirits to overthrow a government. Be sure to watch until the end of the video to find out how I got kicked out of the Alchemist Guild. And I met Farah. You're cuter than I thought you'd be. You're cuter than I thought you'd be. I love her already. She needs some copper ore. We'll work on that. I had a little bit of stamina and time left, so I made some farm plots before starting my nightly routine of sprinting to bed before passing out. I woke up to a mail delivery. Asuna wanted to welcome me to town and urged me to get to know my neighbors. I planted all of my seeds for my parents and gave Farah her copper ore. I completed the Furnace for a Friend quest. Farah gave me the furnace recipe as a reward. Outside, I spotted a new villager and met Quill, who carried me after the accident. I'm swooning. He thought it was a mechanic? Are there cars in this universe? I decided to try and flirt with him and failed. All of my flirting is failing. I've got to get out of here. I felt like hiding, so I cleared some more space around my house. I also crafted the furnace and threw some iron in there. I found the warp whistle! Now I can always find my way home. Also, be sure you're praying to the goddess statue every day. You never know what good fortune might come your way. I almost forgot about the dungeon Asuna told me about last night. I felt like that should be a priority. This must be the dungeon. And there's a treasure map! Before I headed into the dungeon, I needed to make sure I was in tip-top shape. So I made a pit stop at the hot spring. This is kind of slow. Inside the dungeon, I was greeted by a giant Laputin robot trooper. I think that's what they're called in Castle in the Sky. I decided to explore the right first. My first task was to dodge these projectile enemies. I look so good right here, but in reality, I just got super lucky with timing. I got my first chest! Yay me! I got teleported into some kind of teleporter area. My first dungeon spirit! How exciting! Cool slime is coming home with me. Ow! Aw, oh, Hopstraw is so cute, and I'm getting major Howl's Moving Castle vibes from him. So welcome to the team, my little prince. Chest number two down, and I got the sprinkler recipe. I found the boss before the last two chests, so I might have to do some backtracking. If I survive. The battle took far longer than I'd like to admit. And Hopstraw got down to 3 HP. But I won! I leveled up so much. I got a Moonstone from the chest. Oh, this tree's so pretty. The Ando tree fills you with strength. My stamina is permanently increased. Oh, this is like the shrines in Breath of the Wild. And I've completed the Explore the Dungeon quest. For the chest I missed, I had to do this Pokemon-esque 
teleportation puzzle. I struggled, to say the least. Please don't judge me off of this. I, I don't know how I keep making the same mistake. I'm actually gonna pass out doing this. I'm so glad that's over. I love the sound of the warp whistle. Time to check the furnace. Looks like I had some iron bars ready, and I threw in some copper ore to smelt while I was asleep. And of course, I need to sell my goodies from the dungeon. Top priority every day is watering my plants so they don't wither. That would be so embarrassing. I need to meet the rest of the townsfolk, so I'm heading down to Nook's Cran- I mean the carpenters to meet Paolo. I'm Paolo, and I do the carpentry work around here. I'm sure you've met some of the others in town already. Is everyone treating you well? Obviously, after such a sweet introduction, I had to flirt with him. He looked so disappointed. I was mortified. I definitely should have made my purchases before embarrassing myself, but maybe the business will make up for my failed advances. The random crafting recipe was a calendar. How exciting. Ooh, looks like the goddess left me a concoction for my prayers. Oh, who is this? She's a sleeve? I already love her. Ah, oh, an alchemist. Also, no told me you arrived in style. I'm Ophelia, but you might hear some people call me Lena too. I'm the botanist in town. I whip up cures for what ails them. I suppose you'll be doing that too. Someone is bound to like me, so I flirted with Lena too. The third time's the charm, I guess. I needed to head over to the smithy, and I ran into Quill. I tried to flirt with him yet again and fail. Aw, Farrah told me I look nice today. You have no idea how badly I needed to hear that. I still need to meet Guiana, Tobin, Rowan, Zed, and Cleo. Time to check out the Science Center and meet Zed. Oh, hello. You must be the new alchemist everyone's been talking about. I've always wanted to see an alchemist regalia in real life. Wow. He explained that he was awarded a grant to study spirits and asked me to share any info from my adventures with him. Specifically, he needs me to tame a spirit for him, and for my efforts, he'll get Paolo to draw up the blueprints for the spirit barn. And with that, I had a new quest, taming spirits. I went ahead and turned in some spirit research. Zed seemed very appreciative and even told me to keep up the good work. I'm blushing. Clearly I should flirt with him. He was not on board. Now that I've embarrassed myself in front of every single person I've met, it's time to get off this island and find some place where nobody can hurt my feelings. The balloon is actually such a cute way to travel. I wasn't expecting to find a new island so close. Oh, I completed the craft a balloon quest. I harvested some more seeds. Back home, the farm is looking a little dilapidated. This is making me so eager to explore the rest of the world. Another treasure map. I think I'm going to hoard them until I explore the whole map, then dedicate an entire day to treasure hunting. Aw, a little cloud guy. This must be a water type island. <sighs> He's a boss, so I can't tame him. <laughs> Still got a whoop though. I love the sound of my little guys leveling up. I stumbled upon a talisman station, and I think I'll choose a cleanse talisman, because sometimes you just gotta get rid of some starter cards. I took a quick trip into the medallion to level everyone up. Popstraw had five upgrade points. I chose one armor, one vitality, and three power. He also had the opportunity to add five cards to his deck. I primarily focused on attack cards, then I moved along to upgrade capacity. I'm mainly focused on building his speed while trying to keep him healthy and armored up. It's all about the synergy. Dusty is also getting his speed built up while not letting any of his other attributes slack. I was just running into any spirit I saw at this point. Because time doesn't move while you're battling, and I'm trying to grind. 
I tamed Starcy, Octopup, Sandcrashle. <laughs> Why did this house just run up on me like that? I just got jump scared so bad. It's cozy. We're fine. What? Chumbo? Can I talk to him? Magic Man? Y you're late. The winds blew you here, but it's almost too late. Ooh, ominous. They used to call me Waldo. <laughs> I live in a chicken house. <laughs> Why does that sound like a confession? You see, I think I did something, and I think I need someone to be the undoing. The drama. I lost my mind. Yes, literally. I remember losing my memories, scattering them across islands, deep in dungeons. But I can't remember why. <laughs> if you find any of my memory shards, please bring them back to me. I'm not a monster, so of course I'll help the guy out. And I have a new quest, the magic man's mirror. I just so happen to have a memory shard on me from the dungeon I did yesterday. A little piece of my little mind. That's kind of cute. Looks like I can also buy cards and talismans from him too. I kind of love the chicken house. I bought a little one too, because you never know when you'll need to hit him with a little one too. You must be in a relationship to sleep in their bed? That's wild. I parted ways with the chicken house to hunt for another mine, but of course I tamed some spirits along the way. My mining strategy is just keep hitting rocks until the mine opens up. Found it! This must be a tiny mine because there's only two chests. Oh my, who is that? I need him. The first chest has a recipe for a greenhouse. Chest number two is a recipe for the mailbox and a moonstone. <gasps> His name is Torval. I love him. He's like a little wind-up toy. I got him! I was going to race home and add him to my medallion, but a psychic storm started up, and I'm really excited to discover some psychic-type spirits. So, Torval will have to wait. There are also special plants during a psychic storm. This is so exciting and pretty. Major magical girl vibes. I'm so glad I didn't head back for Torval because I would have missed out on this island's moonstone. My first psychic type is Pasho. It's like a precious little fairy. Love, immediate tame. <gasps> Who is that? Who is that? Taro? <gasps> She's everything. I got her. She's a pink magical deer. She's a pink magical fairy deer. Oh, my favorite spirit. This is my favorite spirit. And on that note, I'm hitting the warp whistle home. I feel like this has been the longest day ever and I'm still making it to bed an hour early. With my skill point, I unlocked Tame Adept because I haven't even crafted the spirit barn yet. Spring seed harvest is now open. Happy spring, everyone. If you find any exotic seeds, bring them to the conservatory. Sincerely, your local botanist and herbalist. I unlocked the quest, Spring Seed Seeker. Zed also sent me a letter thanking me for my help and giving me the blueprint Paolo drew up for the spirit barn, along with the spirit stall and the spirit nest. Looks like the goddess gave me a gem today. Love her. Stopped by Palos to see if he's selling anything cute today and got my random crafting recipe. I actually love this stone path. This is so perfect.
Okay, I actually can't wait any longer to add Torbal and Toro to my party. Hi Zed! So Zed has a new quest for me. Pretty much he just wants to see 10 different spirits. He also told me he's working on a new gadget to let me see spirit levels while I'm out. Torbal has a really cool passive. If he gets wounded in battle, he can regen without using any skill points. And Taro helps with underleveled spirits, leaving me alone while exploring. My home is looking a little dull. Hopefully I can get some more decoration soon. The paths that are naturally here look so much like the path, you know, the animal crossing path. Love. I'm going to try and meet the rest of the locals today. I probably should have completed this quest by now. Yana is absolutely precious. She seems very moody though. Should I ask her on a date? I guess we should do the date as soon as possible. Beach, tavern, or hot spring? Hmm. I should play it safe. <gasps> she said yes! I can't believe it! I've had such terrible luck just trying to speak to everyone. I might as well sow some seeds while I'm here for the spring seed seeker quest. I am nothing if not efficient. I have so many more seeds to find for this quest though. Looks like I've done everything I need to do for my spirit research. I'm just waiting for a letter from Zed. I still need to sell iron ingots to Farah, and the only locals I have left to meet are Tobin, Rowan, and Cleo. Oh, there's someone I haven't met yet. It's Cleo, and she's a cutie, and she's glad I'm here. And she's a resident historian. I was successful on two out of three of my chests, so not too bad. I think it's pretty safe to assume that one of the people I still need to meet is in this fish house. It's Tobin! Ah, you're the come from away, aren't ya? He's a sweetie. I love him. And I love fishing in games. Maybe I should have met everyone before I started dating, because I adore the last three people I met. He asks me to catch some fish for him. Anything for you, Tobin? And with that, I unlock the mythical fish quest. I can't believe I'm five days in and I'm just now getting my fishing rod. Usually that's the first thing I do when I try a new game. All I can do is hope that the fishing mechanic is better than Stardew Valley. Okay, looks like I cast out my line by holding and releasing. And wait, of course. Oh, this is so fun! It's like a little aim training mini game. I got a moonfish! Very on brand. I still needed to explore the rest of the island, so I decided to take a look around. This island is a lot bigger than I originally thought. A cave and a talisman arch. Very nice. The bridges come in handy so much. I would love to see a bridge spirit or something of the sort that saves you from having to craft them so much. The cave has the most breathtaking view I have ever seen in my life. This is quite literally Laputa. After a view like that, I go off and explore. Oh, this looks like an earth type island. Kind of struggling to get up where the spirits are though. Maybe I should mess with this doohickey. It gives you a random spirit encounter? We beat the wild dusty and my new spirits leveled up. Oh the psychic cards are so pretty! And it seems like I'll be able to build up Taro's deck to manipulate energy points. My goal with Torbal is to get good healing cards in his deck and make him super tanky. 
Oh, it's not for random spirit encounters. It's for teleporting. Whoops. Looks like an electric type island. It shocks you. The noise is rough. Oh, little cloud guy. Level 32? Oh my gosh, no. Of course I can't flee. Dusty, no. Please, please. I couldn't get away. I'm adorable. Oh. That, that was rough. Magic man. Dying makes my day end. I guess that makes sense. I woke up in Magic Man's house. Hey, I thought I couldn't sleep here unless we were in a relationship. And it's 9 a.m. I slept in three hours. You were passed out. Yes, I carried you here. You are safe now. Why can't we romance the mysterious man that saves us? I feel cheated. Apparently, I can receive mail out here though. And I got the letter I was waiting for from Zed. He asks for spirit dropping, and I now have the quest, spirit poop. <laughs> I think I'm going to spend the rest of today on Moonstone Island because I don't want to risk missing my date, especially since I already used my warp whistle for the day. Leo is sitting by the waterfall reading a book. That is actually the dream. She hints that she wants to spend more time with me, but I need to keep my focus on Guiana. I've already committed to a date with her tonight. Zed gives me an egg quest to hatch my own spirit. It is genuinely paining me to put my moonstones in the furnace because they're so pretty. But I need the moonstone ingots badly. While I'm stuck on the mainland today, I might as well finish my meet the locals quest. They yelled at me! My first interaction with Rowan is getting yelled at for walking in 10 minutes before the store closes. Honestly valid. Don't be like me. But that, I completed Meet the Locals. I should probably just fish until my date starts. Because this is the best fishing mechanic ever. And it'll be impossible to miss my date if I'm already here. I discovered a jewel fish. Looks like Kiana is here early. Maybe I can impress her with my fishing skills. She walked away from me. And on top of that, I caught a boot. But at least it's a gold boot. Oh, it's starting. So, uh, I noticed that you never say anything. I mean, you just sit there. Am I creepy? And listen. Oh, it's okay. She's into it and stare okay may maybe not don't you ever have anything to say i feel like i'm being confronted right now um i'm a deep thinker oh she liked that you should talk more then if you think things you should try saying them out loud otherwise it's just unnerving am i getting bullied right now obviously think you've got something interesting about you um thanks i wouldn't have said yes to the date otherwise See, you've gone silent again. What am I supposed to say to that? I think I'm just going to go home. This was a weird date. I agree, it was a weird date, but it's definitely not my fault. I think that went well. What? If that went well, I would hate to see a failed date with her. I have a foraging skill point to spend. Aw, Link to the Grass is an ode to Zelda and I love it. It gives you money sometimes when you cut down grass. I'm gonna go with beginner angler though, because I'm obsessed with the fishing. My first moonstone ingot is finished. I'm immediately spinning my moonstone ingot to craft the moonstone enchanter and plopping it down next to my other workspaces. This is an absolute must for the spirit barn, broom, glider, pretty much anything cool. It's raining today, so I don't have to worry about watering my crops. 
I'm back to exploring other islands today. I have this innate need to reveal the entire map before I can focus on things I need to get done. I remember when Breath of the Wild came out, the first thing I did after the tutorial was spend the entire day unlocking every single tower before doing anything else. I found an Earth Island. The spirits were pretty low level. And there was a dungeon. All the spirits in the dungeon seem pretty low level as well. And I'm not complaining after what happened on the electric island. I actually flew through this dungeon. Beat the bricks off the guardian. And got the moonstone out of the chest. Just the morale boost we needed. Ando tree did its thing. And I quickly ran back to grab the remaining chest. Getting late, so I hit the warp whistle back home and threw some more moonstones in the furnace. Before bed, I unlocked Beginning Spirit Mancer and Weak Link. Because why wouldn't you want dungeon bosses to have less armor? Day 8. I noticed that my scythe had trouble harvesting some plants, so I'm going to go ahead and upgrade it with Farah. Three copper ingots and 2,000 gold is kind of expensive, but it's doable. I also needed to swing by the conservatory to sell some seeds for the Spring Seed Seeker quest. I still needed to level up my spirits from the grinding yesterday and build up everyone's deck. Upgrade all cards in your hand for the rest of combat? It takes three energy, but that still seems broken. I'm keeping Dusty's speed pretty high and I like how this card breaks armor and does damage. I'm wanting to build up Tara's power, but her vitality is just way too low to ignore right now. I've been having a lot of fun with the energy manipulation cards, so I have to go with Open Mind here. I also went ahead and fed Tara a talisman to upgrade a card. Open Mind Upgraded gives you two free energy. I'm so excited to see how I end up using this. Now that everyone is nice and leveled up, of course I have to put all the upgrades to the test. Aw, this island has a little house! Have I said that I love the art in this game yet? Because I do. And I'm continuously giddy over finding new places and exploring. Magic Man is here! You've done it! You have! Yes! You found the Spring Temple! Whoa. And I found you! The ancient place used to be a site of worship. Huh? People would come from the Old Kingdom and leave offerings to the spirits here, yes. But they forgot the spirits, and they did not like that. Oh, this temple is built around a tree. It is. Around a sacred tree. Oh, yes. How does Magic Man remember this if he doesn't have his memory? But the spirits inside? Oh, they are angry now. To reach the tree, you will have to defeat them. Eh. But first... Leave an offering at the shrine here. Okay, looks like I need to obtain the earth seal. This is very great deco tree coated. I have a cattail and a stone fruit on me, so this is kind of perfect. This is so cute. I have a feeling day 8 is way too early to take this on. But I'm gonna try anyways. I knocked him out first hit! Okay, maybe I should have come sooner. 
alchemist wand an ancient alchemist tool which allows the user to rapidly grow plants by spending stamina does every temple give you a new power this is probably my favorite game i've played this year next i need copper and iron ingots but i only have copper on me at the moment i'll have to come back later might as well get a little fishing done while i'm here I discovered a zin fish and a sissy fish. Back home, I grabbed some iron ingots out of the furnace, so I'll be ready when I head back to the temple. I upgraded my combat with one step ahead to let me draw one extra card at the beginning of combat. Time to harvest my crops! Look, I know I'm not much of a farmer, but I honestly didn't think I'd be able to keep these little guys alive, so I didn't want to get too ambitious. But now that I know I can do it, I promise I'll put more effort into the farming part of the game. But not too much. Exploring still comes first, and romance, and my elite spirit team. I finally have enough materials to craft the spirit barn. I love that it's a tree and it has little mushrooms growing on it. An immaculate design choice. I placed some stalls, put some fiber in, just have to make it nice and cozy before my spirits move in. I also made a spirit nest, so I can hatch an egg for Zed. I'm farming! Please be proud. Paolo is selling this beautiful stained glass moon window and bookcase. So without question, they have to go into my home. It's starting to get cozy in here. These fish have been sitting in my pocket a little too long for my liking, so I went ahead and sold them to Tobin. And he liked them so much, he put some of them on display. I feel so special. With all of my chores out of the way, it's time for some more exploring. Looks like I stumbled upon another Earth-type island. They seem pretty popular. I found Warmer and immediately moved him to my spirit barn for easy access because his passive ability <laughs> because his passive ability is mowing the lawns. <laughs> it's so random that he's the one that has that ability, but I find it so charming. I'm a little apprehensive to take the teleporter after what happened last time, but curiosity got the best of me. Oh, another Earth Island and a dungeon doesn't seem too dangerous. How do I, um, how am I supposed to get down? Maybe I should just float down to the lower part? Oh, I can't control where I'm going. I guess this is just what I'm doing now. It's getting late and I'm getting nowhere. Should I just accept my fate and fall? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Okay, Magic Man is living up to his name because somehow he caught me. I woke up on the part of the island that I died trying to get to. Let's, Let's go. go, I guess. I guess. Well, since I went to all this trouble, I might as well do the dungeon. The puzzles in this one aren't too challenging, but they still feel rewarding. I don't want to talk about that. This chest had a moonstone and the crafting recipe for the tree fort. Love that. The fights aren't too bad, but poor Taro definitely needs better armor. Lou thinks that I'm wasting my time on her, but I will never give her up. Torbal, being the tank that he is, single-handedly won. I am so proud. This chest was nowhere near as good as the last one, but 
but there is still plenty of treasure left to find. I'm not ashamed to admit, I struggled hard with this chest. I think I probably need the broom or glider to reach it. I was a little nervous for the boss fight. Weak Link is really helping me out though. It literally cut the Guardian's shield in half. Haro is already getting bullied. So I'm going in with some health regen. I'm working on breaking down the Guardian's shield a bit, and I love this card that reduces all tackle cards to zero cost, so I can get free hits in throughout the fight. Sadly, even with Torbal's best efforts, Taro still goes down. The Guardian's artificial armor, which makes his shield regen, is making things a little difficult. It feels wasteful to reduce its armor by one when it'll just get it back the next turn, so I'm going to hit Dusty with this instead. I'm going to go ahead and use my free tackle card on him too, and that will allow me to use my regroup card to draw another. Thankfully, I got a bash card that's strong enough to fully break the Guardian's armor. Now I'm just trying to do as much damage as possible while the Guardian is vulnerable. With Torpal down though, I'm in a pretty bad spot and I'm very limited on cards. I did the best I could, but I'm starting to get a little nervous. Since I haven't been home yet today, if I lose this fight and can't go home to feed my spirits, they'll get hungry in my barn and run away. I'm so lucky I got another reduced shield by 5 cards so I can fully break the guardian again. I'm so glad Dusty is gone. It's starting to feel like I've got a chance. Torbal knocked out the Guardian! Things are looking up. Okay, we worked for that win. Oh my gosh. I got a memory shard for Magic Man. And another Moonstone. And a teeny tiny skull recipe. I quickly stopped by the Ando Tree and I could not warp home fast enough. Thankfully, it's raining so I didn't have to worry about my crops, but I still needed to check on my spirits. I threw some more moonstones in the furnace, sold some stuff, and headed to bed. I woke up to find my first spirit poop. Yay! I swapped Dusty out for Warmer. Don't worry, he isn't gone forever. I just need to mow. Cutting grass on the Warmer is ridiculously fun. It just scratches some kind of itch in my brain. I bought a bathtub. It comes with candles. I also bought a random crafting recipe. It was a dirty plate. I want my money back. I turned in my spirit research to make up for my dirty plate money. I dropped off warmer at the spirit barn, and I'm feeling pretty ready to give the spirit temple another go. I have been so excited to try out the alchemist wand and to finish the temple it really didn't cost that much stamina level six long log easy I got a bunch of ladder plant seeds. I'm sure these will come in handy while exploring. Speaking of exploring, I'm going to check out what's going on north of the temple. I'm so glad it isn't another Earth-type island. 
These little pools are the best, and I'm really happy it's faster than the hot spring in town. I don't have much time, but I got a talisman, found the moonstone, and fought some spirits. Magic Man is here, and I've been eager to give him his memory shards. A little piece of his little mind. Aw, the mirror is starting to come together! Doc defense looks like it could be helpful, and it's only 200 coins. I could buy five of them for the price of the dirty plate. When I laid down to sleep, I upgraded my novice spirit mancer to allow me to tame spirits up to level 20, and energy boost to start combat with one extra energy. My father sent me a letter to explain moonstones. Um, I don't know why he waited so long to give me this information. It's day 12. I headed back to the island north of the Spring Temple. I didn't have enough time to do the dungeon last night, and it looked a little difficult to get to. Good thing I got some ladder plant seeds and the alchemist wand from the temple. This is the first non-earth type dungeon I've encountered. The spirits in this dungeon were fairly low level, so I was able to breeze through it. I received another memory shard and another moonstone. Pretty good dungeon if you ask me. I stopped by the endo tree to boost my stamina. And of course, I love grinded a bit before heading home. I felt like Taro still needed a good bit of work. I could tell by the shadow on the map that there's another island really close. So I thought I might as well take a peek before I headed home for the night. What is this, a swamp? Oh, it must be poison! There's a moonstone, but how do I get down? It's like a maze. This is actually pretty challenging in the dark. I didn't want to go home without the moonstone, but what do I do? There actually just weren't any stairs anywhere. I did get some cool stuff though. Mandrakes, coins, potions. Oh, stairs! Okay, I need to be quick. I should already be home. Aw, oh, I've got to call it. I was so sad that I had to head home without my moonstone, but I'll be back. I could not believe that I made it home on time. I put a skill point in Peaceful Presence to give me 50% chance more likely to succeed in fleeing. Rowan sent me a letter asking me to help pair people up with spirits. This sounds like the cutest quest possible. I can't wait to get my first request. My little egg hatched today. It's a Dusty! I was hoping for someone new, but I'm still proud. That maze island from last night looks crazy on the map. Obviously, I headed back to go after that moonstone I was forced to leave behind. It took a few hours to find the moonstone, but I was able to get lots of nightshade and mandrake while searching. On the way home, I ran into Lena and Rowan and chatted them up. I woke up to a letter requesting my first spirit pairing. Judging by the hints in Paola's letter, he's interested in an oaken. I spent the day leveling up my spirits and exploring a mine. Sadly, I did not find oaken today. Some of my crops were ready to harvest when I woke up, and I had a finished moonstone ingot to retrieve. I've been struggling to find the perfect gift for Guiana. She seems a little picky. I feel like one of the mandrakes I found on the poison island could be perfect though. I'm a little nervous, but hopefully she likes it. She likes it! While I'm here, I might as well sell some more seeds for my spring seed seeker quest. 
I had enough moonstone and iron ingots for the glider, but I was still a little short on wood. After a little chopping, I finally had 50 wood, 3 iron ingots, and 3 moonstone ingots required for the glider. I'm skipping the broom and going straight for the glider because I've been told it's the best item in the game. Okay, confirmed best item in the game. It's so fast and can go in any direction. This is amazing. It does use stamina, but not too much. There is still so much of the map to explore. I stumbled upon another poison type island south of Moonstone Island. I was able to stock up on some more mandrakes, nightshade, and poison type spirits. Shrubbin is the first one I got and he's precious. I don't know why, but I find the most simple spirits to be the cutest. I guess I'm just easy to impress. Marsha was also fairly easy to tame, love the pink. I also was able to tame Tattle, Emoshroom, and Bird Brain. Moonstone Island! <laughs> After a long productive day of taming spirits, it's time to head home. I tried to talk to Cleo on the way home and failed every interaction. I had three skill points to distribute before sleeping. I chose Fleetfoot so I could have a 100% success rate fleeing from battles, Intermediate Angler to help catch goldfish, and of course, I want to be funny, so I chose funny. Hopefully people will start laughing at my jokes, please. I woke up and chose to craft some more stalls because I'm catching lots of precious spirits and want them to be cozy. I ran into Gion on the bridge, and she thought one of my jokes was funny. I guess it's working out. I needed to go to the science center to transfer some spirits into my barn, and Zed dropped some lore on me. Apparently, rifts open up in the world that cause dark spirits. Sounds spooky. He needs my help to banish them and lets me know I need to turn in my research afterwards. That is the final exam for my spirit research. I also sell him some poop while I'm there, and tell him some jokes. The news about the dark spirits threw me off so much, I forgot to transfer my spirits into the barn. Whoops. Time to explore. I accidentally found a temple I'm not ready for. So I hopped off the island as quickly as possible and tried not to look. I don't want to spoil it. I landed on a pretty average looking water island. I'm sad there isn't a dungeon. I really wanted to do one today. I warped back home, disappointed and decided that moving forward in the spring temple would make up for not finding a dungeon. But I was a little nervous heading off the island without being able to use my warp whistle. I offered up my moonstone and moved up to the last level of the temple. I would be lying if I told you I wasn't nervous. Wait, is that not the tree from Kirby? Um. Maybe not. Mandela effect? <laughs> I probably should have saved this for the end of spring because this boss battle. <laughs> this boss battle took me 11 minutes. Like real life, 11 minutes. Even though Taro had Regen on, she got one shot by Wildwood without even breaking her shield. Torbal and Dusty had to take this on as a duo. And as long as the long logs are up, you can't attack the Wildwood. Once you do defeat the Long Logs, you are able to attack Wildwood, but you have to act fast because they respawn. I was not expecting that at all. And I felt really underprepared, so I would definitely suggest taking your time and leveling up your team before attempting this. I was still able to defeat him in the end, but it was a little more suspenseful than necessary. I obtained the earth seal for my trouble, yay. I was also able to find a dungeon on the way home. Looks like everything is working out after all. Sadly, my inventory was full, so I didn't get much from the chest, but I defeated the level 6 guardian like it was nothing, and received a memory shard and stamina upgrade. 
On the way home, I found another moonstone on Moonstone Island. All of this, and I still made it to bed on time. What a day. I unlocked Ando Acolyte to give me more stamina upon completing dungeons. Paolo was selling another stained glass window today, and I couldn't resist. I asked Kiana out on a second date to the beach, and she said yes. I sold some poison food to Zed. He seemed a little too happy about it. I remembered to move some spirits over to the barn finally. Back home, I put up my second window so my little ghost friend could enjoy plenty of natural light. I found an electric type island. I harvested some nimbus plants and started taming spirits. I tamed Bergloon. Then moved onto a water type island. I found a teleporter that took me to a fire type island. I don't think I have any fire type spirits yet, so this is pretty exciting. The spirits are level 45. How tragic. They look so cool. I want all of them. Sadly, all I can do for now is run away. I fled to an electric type island and wanted to get some fishing done. It looks like the spirits are overpowered here too, which is unfortunate because there is a literal eye dog. I quickly fled from him and hit the teleporter. I ended up on a pretty chill earth island and was able to find the moonstone fairly quickly. Then I stumbled on a fire island that was slightly more reasonable, but still stronger than my guys. I wasn't able to tame anyone though, so I decided to go home and relax after getting bullied by overpowered spirits. I unlocked the tame pro before I went to sleep to help tame stronger spirits. Paolo has a stack of books for sale today, and I absolutely had to get it for Cleo. While I was out looking for Cleo, I ran into Asano and had all positive interactions. I think everyone is finally starting to warm up to me. I gave up on looking for Cleo pretty quickly and decided to head back out. I found a nice poison type island and tried to get a moonstone quality fish for my quest. I haven't been very lucky so far. I also tamed a rad lad. Magic Man's chicken house arrived, so I headed in and gave him a little piece of his little mind. I spotted a dungeon just out of reach, and sadly, I wasn't carrying any bridges, so I got to chopping. I tamed a Toxito. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time for the dungeon because I have a date to get to. I'm so proud of her for realizing how weird the last date was. For the record, it was not my fault. She can be kinda... I don't want to hurt her feelings. Defensive? She likes it. I'm very proud. I feel like she's one of the harder characters to date. home together. I feel like that went well, much better than last time. My Yaros are ready to harvest. Paolo is selling heart windows today. I just can't resist a cute window. I also decided to purchase a home upgrade. Tomorrow I will wake up to having a north wing. I finally ran into Cleo and was able to give her her gift. She loved it and was so happy to have new reading material. I went ahead and sold Farah the five iron ingots I needed to complete getting into metal and received the anvil crafting recipe. It allows you to craft charms to protect you on dangerous islands. On today's expedition, I found myself on an earth type island. I located the moonstone pretty fast and tamed Oaken. You probably noticed that Dusty is missing. I wanted to try out Toxito because he's a higher level than my current spirits. Not my best choice though. I stumbled into a dungeon on a random electric type island. I 
tamed bread mouse when his little toes popped out. I lost it. I was a little nervous when I saw the guardian was level 21. Horrible fell immediately. I should have known better than to bring a water type in here. Taro and Toxito were able to win though. I was able to get Magic Man's Memory Shard, a Moonstone from the chest, and Stamina from the Ando Tree. I upgraded my skill tree with Close Call, so there is now a 5% chance enemy attacks do zero damage. I woke up to my home's North Wing being completed. I'm turning it into my bedroom, and I feel like it has made a huge difference. I moved some furniture over, and it looked so cozy. Halo had some really good stuff when I stopped by. I grabbed this bat arch and a pink stool. I thought it was purple, but what do you know? The bat arch was perfect for the entrance to my farm. And the stool made my room look even cozier. On my way to the science center, I stopped to talk to Cleo, who was busy reading. I wonder if it's one of the books I got her. Once I got to the science center, I replaced Toxito with Oaken in my medallion. I returned to Paolo's shop to give him his very own spirit. He loves him already. I completed the matchmaker Paolo quest, and as a reward, he gave me the loom recipe. I decided to check my progress on some quests. I have had no luck with the mythical fish quest. Hopefully, once I fully upgrade my angler skill in the skill tree, I'll be able to knock it out. Still working on Magic Man's mirror, Spring Seed Seeker is coming along quite nicely. I have quite a bit of poop left. <laughs> I have <laughs> I have quite a bit of I have I have quite a bit of poop left to sell for the Why is that funny? I have quite a bit of poop. I have quite a bit of poop left to sell for the spirit poop quest. With Oaken gone, I decided to try out Cumulo. 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 Cum Cumulo. Then headed out exploring. I found a teeny tiny water island. It didn't have much going on though, so I quickly moved on to an electric type island. I didn't see any spirits though, and electric types stressed me out, so I moved on to a poison type. The second I landed, I got so excited. Look at those huge mushrooms. This place is amazing. I also found the moonstone right away. That's always nice. No, it was another temple and I even activated magic man. I feel like I'm spoiling everything. So I went home. On my way home, I stopped to talk to Guiana and even though I had an 80% chance to succeed at chatting with her, I failed twice. I made a few more stalls before bed and decided to try and hatch a water egg. I leveled up my chatty skill before bed Hopefully that helps. I woke up this morning to Tobin asking to be paired with a spirit. When I go fishing, I see fishy spirits hanging around the place, and I think they're just lovely. There's a particular one with a snorkel that makes me chuckle every time. I'm after having one like that for myself as a good luck charm. Love him. Have to make it happen for the man. I also really want to upgrade my home to the tree fort. I went ahead and took Cumula out of my party and headed down to the science center to get Snorklo. On my way to go give Snorklo to Tobin, I ran into Paolo playing guitar to Oaken. I ran into Tobin on his way into town and handed over Snorklo. Tobin reassured me he'd take great care of Snorklo and thanked me for my efforts. I completed the matchmaker Tobin quest, and it looks like my reward will be a new lure I have to swing by and pick up. Oh, look at Snorklo waddling behind him. <laughs> I could watch him waddle around all day. That is so cute. I went ahead and put Cumulo back in my medallion and set off for some more exploration.
I found what I'm assuming to be a dark type island. I received a notification that the spirits on this island are much higher level than mine and immediately became nervous. Magic man showed up to give me shelter, so I gladly ran inside and gave him another memory shard. The mirror still has so much missing. I purchased HP rain card because Torbal can never have enough region cards in his deck. Outside, I found blood root. Ugh. I decided not to linger too much longer though, so I moved on to an electric type island that felt more manageable. For the first time, I'm really upset that I haven't been grinding farming. I'm practically out of flax flower, and I'm finally fighting a bark bite, and I'm forced to banish it. If I could tame a bark bite, it would be front and center in my party. I am heartbroken. I made it into the dungeon. In my first chest, I got the recipe for the lighthouse. Then I had to step on these plates in the correct order for the pillars to lower. Then I had to mine a bunch of rocks multiple times. Kinda just felt like a time and stamina sink. When I broke the final rock, there was a teleporter plate underneath that took me to my second chest, where I was rewarded with a moonstone and the wood stove recipe. The other side of the dungeon seemed pretty similar with the same puzzle to lower the pillars. The guardian was level 21, but I felt pretty confident going into it. Sadly, Torbal did go down. But we beat the guardian shortly after. I was able to get a memory shard, another moonstone, a pink poster recipe, and upgrade my stamina at the ando tree. I went back to get the last chest. It was a little disappointing, so I took the chest too. I warped back home, threw some moonstones in the furnace, placed my new chest, and went to bed. I received my first agriculture skill point. I am not the best farmer. I chose Propagator, so crops have a 25% chance to drop three seeds when cut down. Just look at how much of the map I've explored. I went over to the conservatory to give Kiana a fire flower, and I think she liked it. Then I swung by the general store to buy some flax seeds. I'm determined to never let another bark bite get away. Today's big goal is to upgrade my house to a tree house, so I need to harvest plenty of wood and rock. After quite a few hours of hard manual labor, I was able to craft the tree fort. I placed it at the end of the dirt path, next to the spirit barn. I feel like they look so good together. I was a little disappointed to find the inside looks the exact same, but I think it's still worth it. When I laid down to sleep, I had another social skill point to unlock, and decided to become a great listener so I can gain relationship points 5% faster. I started off my day by talking to Guiana, and decided to ask her out on our third date. She said yes, I think things are getting serious. We're meeting tomorrow at 20, but today I'm heading off island on another adventure. I pretty much just found islands of similar levels to my spirits to level grind. Once I got back to Moonstone Island, Rowan told me that they liked my house. They must have seen the new upgrade. I crafted a new spirit nest, placed it in the barn, and left a spirit egg to hatch. I'm hoping for a bark bite. I also put a few more moonstones in the furnace. I can now tame spirits up to level 30, and my spirit's attacks have a 5% chance to deal double damage with a critical hit. The water egg hatched into Starcy. I moved him to the science center though. Then I headed outside and crafted the anvil. At this point, I feel like it's necessary to craft charms. Then I went to the smithy and upgraded my axe to a reinforced axe, so I can cut down trees with fewer swings. I stopped for a quick chat with Asano, Rowan, and Quill, then I took off to explore some more. Stopped by an earth island, found a moonstone, and gave Magic Man another shard for his memory. I picked up the melt card for 600 coins. Being able to reduce an enemy's armor to one seems ridiculously overpowered. Next, I stumbled upon a poison type island where I found myself my next dungeon. 
this dungeon seemed pretty big. It had six chests. I was honestly a little disappointed with the contents of the chest. The dungeon boss was yet another level 21 guardian. Not bad. I took him out pretty easily, but Cumula was lost in the process. I, of course, got another memory shard, a moonstone, and the crafting recipe for the heart window, and my stamina upgraded by the endo tree. Once out of the dungeon, I traveled back to Moonstone Island just in time for my date with Guiana. She starts off the date by talking about Tobin and tells me she loves him, but is a friend, thankfully. Apparently, she isn't a big fish fan. I'll try to keep that in mind. I always feel stumped on her dialogue choices, but I felt like the best bet was to share with her my aversion to spiders, so she knows that I can relate. Turns out, she thinks spiders are cute, but my honesty still won me some points. She even said I could call her the next time I have a spider, and she would come help me. Very sweet of her to offer, but I don't think there are phones on Moonstone Island. I guess I could send her a letter. I think this was the most successful date yet. Before going to sleep, I leveled up my skill tree so that in dungeons I start combat with one extra energy. I crafted a copper charm for the electric resistance because those islands give me anxiety. Then I went to upgrade my hammer so I headed down to the smithy. I got the reinforced hammer. Then it was back to exploring as usual. Of course I had to try out my new charm on an electric island and get some fishing done. Seems like the amount of damage I take is lowered to 7. I got a moonstone quality old boot. I also got some joltfish and lightning eels and another moonstone quality old boot. Yeah, that's enough fishing for now. I took the warp whistle back home. I gave Guiana a hot pepper and she really liked it. That got me up to two hearts. I ran down to the beach and saw Tobin fishing with Sparklow. Aw, his little good luck charm. Hopefully he's having better luck than me. I was able to finish unlocking the angler portion of my skill tree, so maybe I can start getting moonstone quality fish? I woke up and picked up some poop from my barn. Sold some fish and more boots than I would have liked to Tobin. <laughs> Checked out my little display case and I'm very ashamed that my only moonstone quality fish is a boot. I stopped by Paolo's and bought a cozy couch. How am I supposed to pass up on a cozy couch? And a purple bedside table. I stopped to chat with Quill and got my first heart with him. Then I headed back to do some decorating. My little house has come such a long way. It's time to collect some more fibers, so I take out my cutie lawnmower and get to work. This genuinely is such a small detail, but one of my favorite parts of the game. It just adds so much character. It's about time I start filling up my spirit barn, so I craft a bunch of new stalls. Then get back to mowing, because my spirits need to eat. Then Warmer and I get some much deserved rest. My electric egg has hatched, and sadly, it's a cumulo. Spark bite, I will get you one day. I hopped back on my glider and went back to exploring. Maybe I can find a wild bark bite. 
I stopped on a poison island and beeline for the moonstone. Then hit the teleporter to a water island. Made my little bridge. And took a dip in the pond. Magic man showed up. He's learning how to speak Fishbow Jr. I gave him his memory shard because maybe he already knew how to speak Fishbow Jr. and just forgot. The mirror is coming along quite nicely. Then I found an electric island. I have one goal and one goal only. Find Bark Bite. I covered every square inch of the island looking for Bark Bite with no luck. I was so desperate, I started running into random electric type spirits, just hoping Bark Bite would show up as backup. Before I cut my losses, I headed over to a poison type island next door for some fishing. And I caught my first moonstone quality fish! The fang fish! Ooh! It was getting late, so I headed back home for bed. I received a letter that I think is from Magic Man asking me to get him a fish bow. My flax flower was ready, so I went ahead and harvested it. Then fed everyone in the spirit barn. Today is Gianna's birthday, so I need to find her and give her a flower. She wasn't at the conservatory, so I decided to take a dip at the hot spring. Gianna, Lena, and Rowan were there. Gianna did not seem happy to see me at first. Oh, but she loved her present. She teared up and got all flustered. I also talked to Rowan and Lena, then headed out to try to find a fishbow for Waldo. I was trying to get as many water type encounters as possible to search for fishbow. Sadly, I couldn't find a fishbow, so I headed back home. I spot Tovin with Snorklow heading into the tavern and decided to check things out. I spoke to Tobin. and bought Zed a cup of coffee for all his hard work. He seemed to appreciate it. Then I headed home for bed. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. So what you're probably still here for, we're going to finish off 100 days in a live stream format. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. And if you're someone who watches long videos to fall asleep, I hope you have a good night and sweet dreams. And if you're Lou, I miss you. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please like and subscribe.